This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 498 here uh, from Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. We have a crew with us uh, on the line. Finally had some issues, but we are here with John Chichilla. He's a gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. I was okay. You don't know how tempting it was to interrupt the intro just for funsies today. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> All, also with us, with an entourage, it appears, is Katie Dutters. Hi. I've got my uh, Baby Yoda has commandeered in ADAT. So <laughs> things are getting wild over here. I'm wearing my Gert shirt, and I'm eating a chocolate brownie and drinking coffee after seven. <laughs> so, so many bad decisions. So, coffee after seven is my mid-afternoon. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what the problem is because I got this giant full cup of coffee right here. Mm-hmm. That's podcast night for you guys. I'm going I'm to be here until four in the morning because that's just how we do. And uh, well, it is the awesome cast and try and get back to that back to the roots. Although the, the stories for this week are not that great. <laughs> um, and apologize if you guys try to join us live. Uh, we are, of course, live every Tuesday night around, around about 9 p.m. E- or I'm sorry, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. <laughs> wrong show on Facebook Live and a bunch of platforms, except for our 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 base our base service that puts us out to all of you guys is down tonight. Uh, a service that we pay for is down tonight. So uh, I have harsh words for restream at this point, and uh, they are going to be hearing about it on uh, on the Twitters later. Uh, uh, and this is this, this is not this is a, a non endorsement for them right now. So not happy about that. To be fair, Vimeo went down for us several times too. Uh, so and I paid a lot more for Vimeo than we did for Restream. But anyways, this is the Awesome Cast where we try to be happy about technology. We'll try this week. Uh, check us out at awesomecast.com, awesomecast on the Twitter, on the Facebook page again, where we are typically streaming over there with things when things work. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the layers of things that broke today. I, I don't even want to get into it. Um, but please go. I, I need a doc because I don't know where we're at right now. Please subscribe to this podcast wherever you do that. Please, um, if you are catching us live, please hit a like on there. Hit a share, especially tonight since we're on such a kind of crazy different platform for the evening uh, than usual. We don't get a lot of traction really on YouTube. Uh, it's usually over on some of the other platforms. So I please appreciate it if you guys share over. Let people know um, that we are definitely still going. Um, please also uh, 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 rate and share us uh, on the podcast or if you're catching this later on a video platform as, as well thank you to audio thank you to our audio partners and friends over at the 405 media.com and postindustrial.com that have been carrying us and sharing us uh with their audiences uh for a while and and, and spring some good pittsburgh podcasting and uh thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast our friends at the coffee club lit club level matt weller john DeGore, and john carmen and at the fan of the show level our friends mike fedor uh, pghmuseums.org and dave podner over there you guys can support the show too at patreon.com slash awesome cast thank you so much for that that's really what's keeping us from really pushing the ads we we promote free pizza and in the services that we do around here <laughs> and that's about it uh for that you guys are kind of helping us keep independent here and I pr- we appreciate that uh, so let's get into our awesome things of the week, uh, and uh, we'll get. <laughs> so, Katie, Katie, you had a social media tip today. I I, I saw this actually a, a little bit ago. So you can do you, you, you tell me your your little tip. Uh, so my social media tip for my friends that run businesses and that are on social media, I completely understand how messages you know, just private messages, DMs, you know, messages to your Facebook page, you know, across the social media platforms get to be a little overwhelming at times with people reaching out to you. 
uh, especially during busy seasons. You know, if you have busy seasons, totally understand that. So you kind of, a lot of these businesses are just shutting them down. So they're not even dealing with it. There's a big issue for a couple of reasons. And especially right now, one, uh, customers cannot contact you privately about an issue that they had. As much as you would love a customer to compose a very nice email or call you, a lot of times they feel that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So when they go to your Facebook page and they see that they can't message you about something, they're going to take it pu public. So this is one of the things, definitely you want to have Messenger open and your DMs open to anyone so that the, your customers, if they have a bad experience, can let you know. And the second thing, which is something that I, I saw earlier today, is um, they can't, customers can't, people watch are watching social media for what other people are posting on social media, especially if it's very hateful or threatening. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are taking screenshots and sending it to people's employers that they have listed on their Facebook page. So instead of, you know, somebody taking a screenshot of the, you know, I, I noticed that this employee posted this, I just want to make you aware of the situation and sending it in a private Facebook message or a Twitter DM, you've cut that line of communication completely off for people. So now they have no choice but to go publicly because I know if I email you with this information, it's going to get lost into, thank you for your concern, email, you know, black hole. Mm -hmm. But so now I'm, publicly posting this on social media, you know, me as like, somebody who's paying attention to social media is public posting this publicly in response to your company. So other people are now seeing that you have hired someone who have posted something very hateful online instead of giving people a way to access you privately. Mm -hmm. So yes, closing down your messengers and your DMs makes, you know, gives breeze up some time, but in the long run, it's going to make a bigger issue for you. Yeah. I, I, you know, this is, of course, a big, I don't know how many times I've had people message me about, hey, I'm having an issue with something or have a question about something. And I was like, I was like, here, please, please message me or, uh, you know, you know, message our inbox and I'll take care of you. Because I don't want to go have the back and forth of, okay, did you do this? Did you do that? You know, just in a general customer service, not, you know, not even including mm -hmm. this whole situation that is happening right now. Um, and, 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 and as you alluded to, like, I've always been of the mind of what is the easiest for them? What is the lowest, mm -hmm. lowest, uh, 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 friction point for the customer to communicate, right? That's mm -hmm. why we try so many different things, even just with podcasts like this, right? Like what is the mm -hmm. easiest for you to be in a chat room, for you to click a button to tweet us? You know, we, we, we have the voice, we've had the voicemails, but who wants to call a number? Who wants to send an email? Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's that group and, and things like that. So, yeah, no, that that's that's a big. And now now you just have the pile on effect. <laughs> mm -hmm. So and this also in, in this. And I also say this because it protects the person who is letting you know this information, because I want to feel safe telling a company, you know, being thoughtful and telling a company that I had a bad experience or yeah, I saw yeah. one of their employees posting that and not get attacked online for this. Yeah. So this thing might just keep continue to happen because people are afraid to let you know because they're afraid of being attacked. Once so it's you see it all the time. People are doxxed all the time. You have to, you know, make sure, you know, you've got to protect yourself sometimes on online. And and if you like I said, if you don't give your customers, your, you know, for the general public a way to talk to you privately, they're just gonna put this online and it's gonna cause trouble. And you're also, you know, they might not tell you at all. <laughs> and you're yeah. gonna continue to have these issues. Yeah, you're, 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 the, the conversation's going to happen whether you're there for it or not, right? Exactly. That's a perfect way of putting it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, no, absolutely. I, it, it's and, and, and I think some people are learning some hard lessons with social media right now uh, along with things. So, um, Also, different names on different platforms, he says. I think he's talking about the users themselves, uh, Potter, in the chat room. Uh, yes, I think, no, I mean, he might probably be talking about business. I'm, I'm guessing okay. that he might be talking about businesses because I, I find that to be something frustrating with me is having a different name, especially for a larger company. I understand, um, if you're a smaller company and you can't claim, like if you, you, I don't know, target, I don't know, make up a name, whatever. And you can't claim your name on various social media platforms because it's a giant business that has something similar, which mm -hmm. is never a good idea to do to begin with. Mm -hmm. But um, that's something when you, you start a business or even if you have an established business, having the same name consistent across social media platforms. So they're able to find you. Uh, for example, when I was looking for a company earlier, 
they had a different name on their Facebook page than they did on their um, Twitter. So it took me a minute to find them there and then to find out that their DMs were shut down. It was just like, ah, come on. So that was way too much work already for me. Yeah, <laughs> so I was just yeah. like, sweet, here you go. Yeah. Figure it out. And then I, and then I did include that they shouldn't, you know, open up their messenger. So it was a teachable moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's, it, it, you know, it, it's kind of hard because, you know, I, I always I always cringe every time somebody's like, I can't I can't do Twitter. So I don't have it, you know, as mm-hmm. uh, you know, for us, you know, we you know, we deal with a lot of pro, pro wrestlers. It's basically a personal brand at that point. And, and to see them like kind of not represent on that level, you know, is like, oh, that's an opportunity or something you're going to regret later. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah, just those little things. But also, I understand it's the bandwidth. I understand that. So oh, yeah, always definitely. get all the names on all the platforms you can think of. You do not have to be there yet if you're starting mm-hmm. off uh, is, is one way to go about it. So, well, thank you for that tip. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So Iron Man for PlayStation VR oh. is obviously coming out soon. And our friends over at GameStop have a nice little multi-pack maybe oh, i lost my browser window maybe your friends um, what's that maybe your friends my friends yeah they're not your friends they're not my, no no they're definitely not my friends <laughs> um but i was pretty impressed for and i, and I realize it is a, a bit pricey i think it comes in at 350 dollars yeah um but when you look at the price of the typical VR kit. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I thought it was it was decently worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you also get a few other things. You get a PlayStation Four um, theme. You get additional four armors, um, and I think that's it. Pre-order bonuses. You get the, yeah the PS3 the PS4 theme and the four custom deco armor. So um, I'm, I'm interested in seeing what this is like, because if you, if you show the the video there at the, the bottom of the link, um, it looked pretty cool to me. I'm interested to see if it has that kind of, what do they call it? Screen dooring effect where you kind of, mm-hmm. it's like looking at your phone screen way too close. Um, but the, the video looks, it looks like it could be some fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely looks a lot of fun. I, mean, I know there's been like a, like first person Batman games and things like that. Uh, Chachi, who's actually hanging out in the chat room uh, under his put a pickle on it account, um, he he's had the PlayStation Four VR for a while. And you you haven't had the PlayStation One, right? Like in general, I haven't had the PlayStation what VR. I have not had the PlayStation VR. No, okay. so I I actually I'll, I'll cover in the um the oh, what do we call it. The gold next week. Um, my 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 fun with Baby Yoda and <laughs> um, GameStop. But yeah, I, I went in there to pick that up, and I ended up talking myself into the the VR Iron Man bundle. Um, I I I I've just I I want to I want to dust off the the Gear VR and play some more. Uh, it's been a while since I jumped into some VR. Of course, it's all going to oh. be older stuff, but. If you're interested, I have a deal for you. Uh oh, oh no! It's <laughs> wait. Are we are we wheeling dealing right in the middle of the show? Sure, we'll wheel and deal real quick. Okay, real quick. If you're willing to swap me back the Galaxy S six, uh huh, I'll give you a Galaxy S nine. Okay, and a Gear VR that will work with it. Okay, I, I so I'm curious because Chachi gave me his old Gear VR and it is not compatible with my S6. Yeah, so I, I bet you it, it'll meaning, be probably compatible I've been with my. Meaning S9. to ask if you had some extra newer phones lying around, so yes. we will we will be chatting about that Just then. Because the the funny part is what I the, the S6 was the last device to have an IR port on it, and mm. I want to create a universal remote for guests in my we house. We will be connecting on that within this week, sir. So Cool. A- even though I think the Gear VR has mostly been deprecated at this point. <laughs> so, but you can still play the games and stuff, so. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, I just I, I just enjoy the idea of having one that doesn't um, overheat after 15 minutes of play. Uh, like the current one does. <laughs> so Yeah, that, I mean that yeah. was the that, and that's the that was the dev 
headset, I think. It was. It was. Yeah, it was the yep. development kit. So, um, excellent, excellent. So, yeah, Chachi says he sold the uh, the PlayStation VR a while ago. It was collecting dust. Uh, so, and, and I got to play some of it um, when he first picked it up, and it's 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 good. I mean, it's um, more or less comparable. I felt as you know the Oculus. You know, or I, I I've I've tried like first gen Oculus and uh, uh, Vives, and um, and yeah, seemed pretty pretty dead on for that kind of stuff so uh me it's my turn what's my awesome thing i guess uh burning pee no i don't see, need to see a doctor well not for that at least uh but uh there was <laughs> i'm not playing the sims this is the kind of week it's been this is the only thing that caught my attention guys uh, <laughs> sims 4 has an update that introduces burning piss so was, was this accidental? I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. Um. So so apparently, uh, the game's latest update introduced an odd feature for some players, where every time they use a sim uses a toilet, there's fire in it. If you're if, and if you're peeing standing up, it's there. Um. More dangerously, if you pee sitting down. Uh, <laughs> So we don't like now. Apparently, the community is trying to figure out: is it is there just fire in the toilet, or is the pee causing the fire? Uh, <laughs> so it was just an odd thing that popped up in um that is that a lady peeing standing up? I don't. I'm confused. Kind of look. I was wondering the same thing, but I'm guessing it's yeah. Not, I don't know. I don't know. I it, it so. Yeah, so burning pee, burning sin- yeah, yeah, burning pee. That's my awesome thing on Sims Four. It's uh, <laughs> kind, of, the kind of week it's been. There's not a lot of good news. Well, you know what? I feel like so. What, what, wasn't Google I/O supposed to be? Well, that's it. Yeah, we're supposed to have places. So we 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 should have had. <laughs> we should have already had WWDC. I yes. think we should have already had Google I/O. E three should have been happening right now. Uh, so there's just this vacuum and plus because of, uh, other world events happening, um, like a lot of them are delaying on top of the original delays. So there's like this, this vacuum of tech news. And I know it's not the most important thing in the world today, but I just, you know, d- looking at a slice of, of things happening, um, it's definitely, definitely the case, uh, to the point where I, I, I don't know. It, it, there, there, there are some interesting stories that we have to address today, uh, but it's just still, it, it's definitely a slim peak, pickings week uh, for sure. Um, I haven't even heard a good Animal Crossing story this week. I, well, you heard me before the show that um, Minecraft Dungeons has overtaken right. <laughs> Animal Crossing and then Nintendo there eShop. There it is. I guess I should play some more of it. I tried playing a little bit and I was just, I was just far too tired by the time I got my hands on it. So. Anyways, well, hey, I wanted, I do want to give a shout out to our good friends over at Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Our good friends there uh, still por- supporting the show, have been for the majority of our nearly, well, our, our, our 10 years of existence at this point, actually. Uh, four locations, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park. Hey, we're in the green. You're getting out, or, out and about around the city. Go, go grab a slice over at Slice on Broadway all around. Uh, town while you're doing that check them out slice on broadway.com all right we do have a couple of stories our friends have been sharing with us over on the awesome cast google google group no facebook group i don't know what platform we're on anymore guys <laughs> i don't geez i half of them are broken right now anyways i'm amazed that this, this show's even streaming right now uh but <laughs> anyways so this is a uh, mostly rumor, I think, but uh, over on Bloomberg reporting, and this has been they've been talking about this as a possibility for for months, if not a year or so. Uh, uh, Apple is apparently planning to announce a, to move on its Mac chips at WWDC. That of course means much like Apple is making the chips in your iPhones and your iPads instead of the Intel processors in your MacBooks and the uh, Minis and and iMacs and whatever. Uh, ideally, they're going to be moving to something they are creating in house. Uh, so I am not. I am glad that I have mostly recently upgraded my Mac, which usually lasts me about four or five years. Um, that I don't have to deal with the headache 
that was will probably be inevitable of them switching to a new pace like this, Chilla. Uh, I, 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 uh, uh, Chilla, Katie, I, were you both there when they moved to Intel and the problems that that, that ensued? So my first Mac was actually an Intel okay. Mac. And, okay. and the funny part is I know there's usually a... a you, you pay the Apple tax, but the funny part was is when I lived in Oakland, some kid from CMU was selling like a one year old Mac for like four hundred bucks. Mm. And it was a dual core a dual core CPU. It was Intel based. So they were well into their Intel journey by then. Mm-hmm. But it was it was the it was the cheapest dual core um, laptop that I could buy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well if I really don't like Mac OS then I'll just install Windows. Mm-hmm. That was but the promise. I, and then and then I ended up liking Mac. Uh, for us, we had a, a a Power Mac in, or yeah, Power Mac. I guess it was uh, one of the cheese graders. Uh, it was like the last G five before moving over. So we had the one at work, and then everybody got Intel's uh, kind of thing when we moved from PC. Uh, Katie, have you have you gone through that that transition back in the day? No, thanks. Well, I mean, thankfully not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was a little what, bit late on the Mac. What would be interesting is if how they're porting all the iOS apps into Mac OS. True. What would be interesting is now it's just going to be running. It could probably run native just like an iOS app. That's the hope. That's the hope. So what are we, I'm wondering what we'll really lose. The, the, the even more over interesting thing to me is could this then get final cut over on the iPad? Uh, yeah, I, I, I also worry about, you know, okay, Final Cut will come over, but now Adobe is going to have to go through the whole reconfiguring things. And they weren't, um, they were taking their time on that last time that they did this. So we'll see how that works out. And uh, what, hmm? what was the emulator thing that you had to always install? Rosetta? Or oh, Ro- no, Rosetta was in the operating system. I had to use this for the longest time at work for, for like programs because we had to. We had a program called Sores and Squeeze. It's pretty much a precursor to like Apple uh, Compressor, right? And uh, yeah, it <laughs> so I had a oh, geez, I uh, virtual virtual something virtual uh, no, not vid, virtual Visual Studio. I don't know. Yeah, no, but I, I know what you're talking about. But they were it was always a pain in the butt. But uh, thankfully, they've already basically um, killed gaming on the Mac thanks to. Um, the, the last Mac OS. Um, it was it was Rosetta. Rosetta was a disc is a discontinued dynamic binary translator for Mac OS that allowed many power PC applications to run on certain Intel based oh yeah processors. Yeah, I thought we were talking about Windows. Yeah. But no no Rosetta yeah. Yeah. Um yeah we'll see what <laughs> Mac OS on a series on a series of chips. Could be. Could be you just have that. I mean we do have Windows on ARM and all those kinds of uh variations now so uh thank you dave potter for submitting that and following up with that contribution in the chat room so here is one that amanda shared over on facebook i'll try to throw the visual up here as well it does have a picture she has a bluetooth remote shutter it is her tech uh, her new text uh purchase she says uh tomorrow she's uh the new charging stand for the watch and iphone so, uh, so Bluetooth to your, uh, presumably to your phone, so you can remotely take pictures. Nice. That is, uh, what is it? Ash, Ashutub, Ashuti, Ashutub. What is that brand? <laughs> uh, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't read it because I saw her post this on Facebook. It looked like an interesting device. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm interested to know how it works. Mm-hmm. I'm also interested because I'm pretty sure she has an Apple Watch. Yeah, doesn't the Apple Watch? So do that? why the the Apple Watch has? So the reason I like the remote shutter on the Apple Watch is because you have a remote viewfinder oh, on I your watch, for, so you can actually see what your phone's keep, taking a I picture keep of. I keep forgetting that exists on there. Oh, it exists, my friend. <laughs> okay. If I if I could ever if I could ever get out of the house ever again, <laughs> and have a reason to actually take my phone and my watch somewhere, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I might use it. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure that's something I would have figured out if I was doing the work I'm usually doing in this time of year. Uh. So, 
Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Brian, uh, Brian Coffer, our friend at pghmuseums.org, uh, shared in. This is an oldie, but a goodie. Uh, as something I've heard of uh, many times over the years. He says he's been introduced to meditation and its effects on helping with mindfulness and was encouraged to use the Headspace app by a friend. It's an incredible resource in learning the practice using technology to help you grow. Uh, right now, they're offering it for free for people unemployed. Uh, this is uh, his awesome thing of the week. Go check it out. Uh, you can hop onto it with uh, uh, headspace.com. And of course, there's apps on your uh, mobile devices as well. So I I, ha- I, I I did play with this a little bit, like uh, you know, back when they first started, when it was mostly kind of a free freemium kind of uh, 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 subscription. But yeah, you can. So you, if you're unemployed, they're going to give you a full year of Headspace Plus for free. That's nice. How do how do you prove that you're unemployed? Uh, <laughs> I don't. So so. <laughs> Is there uh, like a capture for that? So so it's got a most recent employer, role, work industry, last date of employment, and zip code. Still working, learn more. Hmm. Oh, then it just turns turns into a uh, free trial. You'll get two weeks free. And uh, for comparison, it's a seventy dollar a year service. So, but I, I, you know, for spread over a year, that's not bad. Wait, what? What is what's happening over there? What's what's happening what's over squeaking? where? What's squeaking? Is Baby Yoda oh. squeaking? No, sorry. I moved something on my desk. <laughs> Table thing. She did, she did rotate Baby Yoda earlier. I did. Did he you? He wasn't on camera well enough. I felt bad. You couldn't really see he was in an ad at. <laughs> and I also moved it so my head was still in the shot because I realized I gave Baby Yoda priority in my shot. Can you tell the people, you, you disclosed this before the show, before we even went live. Uh, what is holding up the ad at right now? Oh, gosh. So I will show you. You'd, it oh, is... It's a uh, middle, or well, up, you can fall down. I'll pull it down in a second. Uh, middle Earth script to screen the world of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and it's from Weta, and it's this big and this big <laughs> and weighs as much as I do. <laughs> That's sure. what's propping baby a up. Tome, right a tome, a tome. It is. Uh, oh, Amanda Amanda uh, uh, chimed in about that Bluetooth uh, clicker we were talking about earlier. Says she loves it, opened a Bluetooth, and it was there. Uh, wanted it so that she could pose and not have a watch on or not have to worry about the backwards look. Um, plus found with uh, video and... Oh, with video, the, with the, video, watch, the watch lags. lags. Okay. I've, n- I've never actually used it to trigger video. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, there you go. There's a reason to use that instead of the Apple Watch. I mean, it's one way to do it, but um, you know, it depends on your use case. Hey, guys, we're doing a lot of stuff over here, helping a lot of churches, helping a lot of uh, services. Uh, we're actually getting back to having some people in the studio. Uh, we had Fishing Without Bait, and of course, then our guest was in New York City because uh, she moved out there right in the middle of a pandemic. But uh, <laughs> we have a lot of services we've been helping a lot of people with. We're going to be doing another music video tomorrow. Um, which I think we're just going to shoot basically outside here in front of the studio from the sounds of it, uh, instead of the green screen we usually do. We have kind of a different, to- a different um, um, aspect we're doing with that. So it's good to get back in with some of these projects on the pro wrestling shooting uh, that's going to be rolling out here in the next several weeks and, uh, and getting out with a camera and uh, helping with a lot of podcasts and keeping them going through everything as everybody's been cooped up, as uh, you've seen if you've been listening to or you've been hearing, you've been seeing with your ear eyes. <laughs> uh on this podcast and others as we do it remotely but of course that's all happening you know uh right here at sorgatron media uh from sidekick media services uh we can be the sidekick in your superhero project find out more over at sidekickmediaservices.com okay we got a little bit more uh, a list of stories going on here uh, I was excited to see uh, a couple of these before before we touch those. Um, Katie, what has UPMC been doing? Uh, I couldn't find an article where they actually announced this, but when I went in for uh, chemo today, it was my first experience with one of the smaller. If you if you're in the there's a wired um, link that I sent you up that uh, you mm-hmm. scroll down a little bit, you're actually able to see the device. It looks like an iPad. But it has a little camera on top, and it's, it's thermal. Uh, it's a thermal thermal check temperature, temperature check. Um, so they're using that now because for a while they were doing the forehead thing where they had to physically touch you, or not physically touch you, but they got real close because um, mm-hmm. that was the one they were using before with the little 
pew pew. Um, mm-hmm. But they would scan your forehead. And but now they've transitioned over to these smaller, like iPad looking cameras. Uh, that didn't, and I had no idea when I went in today, but I saw that that's a thing now. So I don't know if they're just testing it now at McGee or if they're going to be using it more later um, mm-hmm. or like the rolling out later. I'm not sure. I was only at McGee, so that's the only one I can speak to. But I definitely got to use one of those. I did find out that it is set up for people shorter than I am. I am six <laughs> one. So if they if you go in there and they're like having a hard time checking your temperature with this or if you go anywhere, I'm assuming they're probably set for like the five foot eight height, mm-hmm. like the average. So you, if they can't get it right away, first thing to try is duck down. And then they might be able to get you and realize you're people because that was my um, – issue today when they were trying to scan me and they're like we're not getting a temperature can you do this can you do this and then i was like scrunch and then boom there i was <laughs> so you'll start seeing that and did, um did, for check, temperature checks hmm? did, did there's because in that in the picture it looks like you kind of get your forehead in the target circle yeah theirs was a little bit bigger it was the the head and the shoulders i saw whenever they kind of not took when they took the image I could see from about my chest level up to the top of my head and I could see my hot spots uh, on my body, which was like, Oh, that's interesting. Can I know how warm, you know, you just want to kind of know more, but <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> there was a line and we were social distancing and people had places to go. There's, there's going to be a lot of, you're going to see a lot of these kind of pop up. I, I was kind of impressed because we were doing the video shoot this weekend and everybody that was participating. Um, we, we got um, one of the thermometers from way wise that they were selling that you have to kind of mm-hmm. get close with it, like, you know, real close, and it'll, it'll do it, and it'll buzz and give you the, the, the temperature. Mm-hmm. But the ones they had, uh, it, it, you from a distance, you hold up the gun, and I, I love the, the the girl was like, it's like, wait, don't, don't come in yet, I have to shoot you. <laughs> and, and it actually does like a laser sight that they, that they point at the forehead, and I guess that takes the temperature. So uh, kind of a probably a higher end one than, than the ones that we have. Uh, but, uh, but no, yeah, I, you're, you're gonna, I, I'm kind of interested by the time that I get a chance to travel and fly, it, 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 you know, what that's going to look like. Right. Well, I think it's a lot like what I'm imagining with these infrared cameras is mm-hmm. if you've ever been to a, um, a gym where mm-hmm. you scan like your card and it makes like a beep boop sound or whatever the noise is, or, or I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of like self-serve and you're either going to hear a beep boop or a burn. When you walk in someplace, which is <laughs> and the know. metal cage comes down yeah. and they escort you off. You need to go now. <laughs> but I'm thinking it's probably going to be much more self serve. And it was easy, like I said, as soon as we figured out where you know the issue was, it was like, "Boop, you're good, bye." I'm like, thanks. No, absolutely, absolutely. It, it, yep, it, it's it's a time for technology. <laughs> so we'll see what's going on there. Oh, this just in. <gasps> this just in. I just got this news three minutes ago. PGH Bold Sports, Bold PGH Sports, I'll say it the right way, will be recording a new episode this week. It will be the first episode since the Super Bowl uh, special that we did live. So, wow. So, good to have them back. I think we're just getting into a lot of the issues with sports uh, um, uh, right after that. So, um, no, good to see that that's coming back. So, there's a heads up uh, there for you. Programming note, I suppose. So, uh, Chilla, you got some gaming news? I'm yeah, so, I think this is interesting. I, we, I think, was it back around the holidays? I covered the, the device that lets you clip your phone onto um, an, an Xbox controller. And I yep. think they had a PlayStation version as well. Yep. Still this using one it. is made by Razer. It's the Kishi, I guess, Kishi. Um, Kish. But it's Let's a, just go Kish. Like the, food, like the food item. Why not? Mm-hmm. With uh, an eye on the end? Kishi. Okay, you're right. <laughs> okay. It's a silent eye. Okay. Um, but no, the, this device kind of wraps around. Your your device kind of slides into it and it clamps down. They, they make it for, the, for Android and iOS, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. If you don't want... <clears throat> I looked at it as if you don't want the bulk of carrying, you know, your your Xbox or PlayStation controller with you everywhere you go, or unless you wear it on your belt buckle, like Captain Nintendo, or what was his name? Captain yeah, N? Captain N, the Game Master, sir. Captain N. Mm-hmm. Um, unless you're wearing it on your belt. Um, I thought this was pretty interesting. It kind of collapses down. You have the left and right joysticks. You have your D-pad on the left, your X, Y, A, B on the right. 
um, and it has the the uh, the bumpers and the triggers. So I thought it was thought it was a pretty cool concept. Um, obviously, I haven't actually gotten to use it. I liked how it collapsed down, probably about a little bit ways down the page. They show it collapsed mm-hmm. um, together. Uh, I think it is. I think it's Bluetooth. Um, um, I I don't know because the the one picture actually shows the um, connector. Uh, presumably for a Samsung. Okay, then maybe it's it, yeah, it's probably mm-hmm. using the MFI or Android uh, technology. There, there's a lot of these that are Bluetooth based. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know if that was using that just for power, um, but it does come in at a little bit of a hefty price tag. You're looking at about eighty dollars mm. um, for the device. But well, we're talking fifty dollars typically for an Xbox controller, Xbox One controller. So. Um, I can see that. I, I like the. It looks like a more rugged. I was reading articles that again. I'm the only one here without a Nintendo Switch. Somehow, uh, uh, people complaining about the the Joy Cons about having issues with them, uh, about the build and everything. This looks like a more rugged edition of the Joy Cons, uh, which makes sense since you're doing something to travel with the phone, right? I like how it looks with the Samsung in it. Like that looks cool. Mm-hmm. Like that that edge edge screen, which I would never want to use the edge edge screen because I'm like, where do I put my thumbs? Uh, for those <laughs> things uh so uh no i think that that's that's really cool so cool uh so that's the kisi razor kishi we'll, we'll we'll say that's how it's going to be said uh and uh you can go check that out too all right i also got let's say on the video game thing for a while some good news ea sports no ea electronic arts yes well it's kind of a sport i guess it's in the game it's in the game. Uh, <laughs> Need for Speed Heat is the first EA title to offer crossplay. That's between PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Uh, starting tomorrow, which is today, which is, yeah, which is now, which is now. You should be able to do this now. <laughs> uh, I believe this is in beta currently for people on uh, Origin. Yes. Uh, EA, uh, it, it will hit EA Access and, uh, Origin Access Basic Vault on June 6th. Yes. Okay, so not beta, but that's just the releases for that. So, um, Is, it, is yeah. there a huge following behind Need for Speed still? Is that why they chose this as the first game, or was uh, this the th- first game that they've released since? I think Need for Speed's been taking a couple of years off, if I recall. Uh, it, it, it had been a pretty hot franchise for several years, so um, so I don't know. I'm just surprised like it didn't come to like Apex Legends first. I didn't know Apex didn't have crossplay. I don't think so. Because I've been looking forward to maybe going to play with some people for it, but um, uh, Doug, we haven't had our play date yet. Uh, so... <laughs> putting that out there uh let's see other video game stuff uh do 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 this is good and this actually happened because somebody also in- included a link for uh, uh nba 2k uh call of duty is actually added a screen uh about with a statement about black lives matter at the uh, on loading screen for Warzone and uh modern warfare uh so you know this is a game it- it- there's been several games that have been doing this especially ones with online modes very apt for call of duty because if you've ever played call of duty with uh other players microphones on you that's a statement that needs to be said a lot uh so uh so no good for them making that uh, it was infinity infinity ward is the developer on that of course is an activision blizzard uh project uh, or product uh so i i don't know if that is uh, anywhere else across what that company is putting out but of course i mean call of duty is probably year to year like one of the top franchises so that's that's a pretty significant reach right there between that and nba 2k of course so and in other not really video game news this is kind of a i don't know i think this may be akin to talking about the not announced uh uh uh, chips for the back the the u.s air force is preparing a human versus ai dogfight uh, so they are going to, uh, pit autonomous fighter drones against, uh, a pilot and they're, they're looking to do this. Uh, it looks like next year they're really kind of scattered on the details for this, but, uh, kind of interesting that they are uh, in the plans, at least publicly about doing this. I, I imagine this is some kind of war games kind of situation. Um, which, I'm sorry. I just, fin- I just finished watching space force last week. So I have that kind of in the top of my head. Uh, so 
<laughs> also, side note, uh, the, the United States is going to be using losing the trademark for Space Force to Netflix. <laughs> That's huh. so funny. Huh. <laughs> we just did a special on Indie Mayhem show about two weeks ago about trademarks because there's a fellow we know locally known as the Reaper, Matt Connard, who had his trademark taken from him uh, because he had not properly trademarked, used it for eight years, and then somebody else with a little more money picked it up out of nowhere that he, had, he was on the show with. So this is another case scenario, Netflix and U.S. government, about about trademarks, I guess. So it's weird. It's 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 a weird week. So, but how's this going to work? Uh, is it just going to be like tar- like human pilot goes up, AI pilot goes up, and like is it like Top Gun where they target lock and that counts? Like, how does that work? <laughs> well, it, it's probably however they do like plain F sixteen war games, right? Yeah, what well, couldn't the AI had just have written its own program to simulate the AI versus human? And we what? Could have... <laughs> then it's just AI versus AI at that point, isn't it? Well, if the AI wrote a simulation of a human, is it? Well, well, I think don't we know by now? We should not give the AI read write access. Like that's the problem, the right? That's the problem, right? Like we, we, they start doing their own thing. That's where we have an issue. Oh, I think we should give it a try. We should give it a try. <laughs> we'll call it Skynet. Ah, oh, jeez, no, NetSky, 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 NetSky. Completely different. Completely different. All right. Well, uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Everybody live on on over on YouTube. Hey, those are good YouTube numbers. <laughs> that we usually don't get. I think literally everybody that usually sees us on Facebook did find us on YouTube. So I appreciate that. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Uh, Chilla, you are. I'm going to, you're occupied. So I'm going to say, Katie, uh, you're on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I use the interwebs. Yes. Where can people find you and what's going on with you? Oh, Instagram, Kate Marie PGH is where I post most stuff. I'm on Facebook. I think I'm Katie Dudas, something or another on there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm on Twitters. Is the Twitters is Kate Utters, and uh, yeah, I like to talk about social media and telling people what how to do it better. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Sign into sign into your DMs with the social yep. media tips. It seems. <laughs> uh, Chilla, he is Chilla on the Twitters. That's me, John's chill on the Facebooks. There you go. My, my son came in. To, something must have happened because he the the show this this week's episode live streaming over YouTube is in some kind of restricted mode. It's not it's not meeting the the child uh, <laughs> controls. <laughs> Interesting. So he's like I was watching and it all of a sudden came down. I, he's like I think it crashed. Mm, no, okay. All right. No, it's not. No, it's 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 not us. It's him. Like um, it came up with like a parental warning. Yes, because uh, I have him in like the kid. He's not in kids YouTube, but he has does have restrictions on. Uh, Chachi uh, is uh, wants to know how to do it better for put a pickle on it uh, for social media. He wants to. Oh know. yeah, yeah. How to do it better? <laughs> yes. How to how to social his pickle better? <laughs> yeah, how to social your pickle? Um, yeah. Mm. I can tell you. Well, yeah. <laughs> There's many ways. He also has because he had an artist uh, uh, make a mascot for put a pickle on it, and and uh, I'm glad I caught that because I, I meant, wanted to make sure we mentioned it here before. And uh, he's looking to the audience of put a pickle on it, which has moved over to Facebook uh, as its new home after some issues with uh, uh, the, the YouTube. And there's that happy pickle. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah. So if you want to submit, uh, there's information over there. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, help name that pickle. <laughs> she she has one happy pickle. pickle. One happy pickle. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Join us in the chat room. We'll <laughs> see you next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.